Well, welcome back, everybody. Podcast number two. This time, the topic is Astronex has a bone to pick with safe science. A terribly big bone. (laughs) Okay. So, straight to it. There's a stagnation among the scientific community. And we want to bring your attention to it for some really important reasons, and you'll learn those reasons soon enough. Bring your attention to it and call it out. And call it out. As you know, we're striving to bring about a revolution in science in order to achieve interstellar travel. Now, we'll get back to that in just a moment. Just today, I listened to a so-called scientist slash engineer state that he gave up on interstellar travel for for at least several years to come, about 50 to 100 years, because he could not see a way to pay for it. He also went on to state, (laughs) and of course I'm paraphrasing, that certain types of... He also went on to state that certain types of technology are so extremely difficult to engineer that they would require a lot of work And so they look for ways around it. Wow. Too many scientists today are looking for ways of new ways of doing things all within the realm of what we already know. But as you and I and us all know, interstellar travel is going to require a revolution in our understanding of the cosmos. And why? Because we just simply are too ignorant here on Earth to go interstellar distances without creating some one-way trip to death. Now, maybe that scientist should have uh, taken up underwater basket weaving instead. If that was true, if there, do we already know everything there is to know? So the question really is, is a breakthrough in science really possible? (laughs) Is there something more out there that we're not aware of? Is there more to learn than we already know? Because if there's not, I can guarantee there's no ETs. No such thing as E.T. And Earth is definitely doomed. Now, instead of searching for ways of finding new ways of doing things all well within the framework of what we already know, and yes, uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, you don't want to break the laws of physics. Well, How do you know that that's the last word? Well, they say years and years and years of of tried and true and tested technologies and other things. That's what they said back 200 years ago before Einstein. uh, Oops, uh, Einstein and quantum mechanics. And quantum, yes, right. Now, sure, quantum mechanics is not ultimately it has to not complete. It's not complete, and ultimately it is going to fall by the wayside. But relativity yeah. just needs a little bit of tweaking, and that's a well, topic. Not a little bit, but it yeah, <laughs> yeah, it needs tweaking, but it does not need to be thrown out, and it's already been proven more than anything else. And f- now, so on that note, it's like this: the scientific community is much like this. When something is out of balance, let's say the crankshaft of an engine is out of balance. Within mere moments of running that engine, that crankshaft will soon exit the block of the engine and not think about it at all. Well, science and nations are the same way. When something is out of balance, sooner or later, the crankshaft exits the block and ends the life of that engine or whatever it is. If we don't have a revolution in science, we are not going interstellar, and we are not going to survive on this planet. 
Now, recently, Einstein, yeah, I just saw a picture of someone painting a picture that look of Elon's face over Einstein's hair. Just recently, Elon Musk of SpaceX stated that he's been watching the skylines of major cities here in the U.S., and he has not seen any change. And he goes on to say, and of course, this is paraphrasing, that is not good. Well, stagnation is really another word for decay or rot. If we're not growing, if we're not keeping up with new developments that could be, we take what we already know and we press the envelope. And if we're not, then we're stagnating. And stagnation leads to, well, look around you. Decay. And decay leads to more imbalance. Not only does the crankshaft break free, but so do the pistons, the folks, the citizens. Everything goes awry. Rome, anyone? Yeah, about that. I mean, Rome's a really obvious example because of how it was structured. But Rome reached its peak in 117 AD. And when I say peak, I mean its greatest size. But after that, it stopped expanding any further. And what happened with it by the time of the next emperor, it already had begun shrinking. And the, the, the shrinking, the decline, sped up over the following decades. And we... Uh, decades, sorry, centuries. Centuries, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oops. And so in other words, the moment it stopped expanding, right. it started shrinking. There was no comfortable pause of just sit there. It started decaying. And, and for, as a counterexample, take Japan. They were stagnating, and rot would have set in inevitably, but then we had the Meiji Restoration, and they were determined to avoid that fate, to avoid being stomped all over, and they did it. And today, they have a unique technological civilization that's all their own. And we could actually, we could actually talk about nations, various nations spanning thousands of years, that have risen and fallen, uh, communities, you name it. There, has no, there is no continuity of, of one nation that's existed beyond, what, a mere 2,000 years, uh, if we look at 10,000 years. Um, but they're also uh, something that uh, you brought up yesterday was, you know, humanity is 300,000 years in development. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's three Homo sapiens is three hundred thousand yeah. years old, and yet it only took the last ten, or if you count to the Romans, eight like eight thousand years for humanity to go from the first cities to a relatively advanced civilization. Now, yeah, the Romans actually had years, those those uh, water. Um, the, those um, mills uh, that were powered they by... Had a, yeah, they had a water-powered yeah. grain factory. It was a factory. They used mass... They used something like an assembly line, but or a grain disassembly line, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But way they back then... Hold on. They understood things yeah. like uh, pistons. They used a water-powered piston to, as a water-powered sawmill to automatically saw through things they had evidence is coming to light that wow. their mathematics are more advanced than we had than we ever knew yeah they had this little surgical tool to remove cataracts not too dissimilar from the ones we have today obviously not electrically powered but right otherwise in shape and wasn't too different right in some ways we've only caught up with them with some of their technology some of their technologies haven't rem have remained more advanced so than anything we've had until yeah the middle of the previous century our we model may have caught up 
we may have caught up overall yeah. by the 1700s to 1800s. But in certain key areas, we didn't actually catch up until the middle of the last century. Now, that's another topic. It's where yeah. how long things can take to rebuild. But the point is, is that if it only took 8,000 years to go from cities to a pre-early industrial civilization, then over 300,000 years... How do we know some civilization didn't reach heights 150,000 years ago? Right. Stone buildings wouldn't la necessarily last in recognizable form over that time. We wouldn't even know it ever existed. Yes. And we don't, there's, uh, the earth changes a lot. And sure, we have, we can dig into the cross and tell a lot of things. But at the end of the day, we still don't know everything. We cannot say for certain that there were no uh, somewhat advanced tech, uh, civilizations on earth prior to this. You know, another example is that our modern uh, idea of the atom came from the Egyptians. Um, well, actually, that's a little bit of a different story than that. That is, a, yes. The, na the name came. The name. Atom. But, but yeah, it, it, that's a more complicated story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But my point, though, wasn't that to... to the point was to about point, safe science. The point is, is that uh, had, um, had the... Uh, library of alexandria not burnt down or had the egyptians carried on perhaps uh the or point the is Chinese had got access to coal a bit sooner yes exactly you see there could have the chinese been... civilization sat at early industrial for over a thousand years wow and that, if they had yeah. had access to that coal they would have gone steam powered and they would a Chinese civilization um, or industrial Chinese civilization could have appeared way back then. Yeah, I mean, and wow. there's Japan. Look right. what they did when they did industrialize. Imagine if just through various quirks, things had happened a little bit differently. Rather than being the we everyone talking about the British Empire and how far it spread, they'd be talking about the Japanese Empire and how far it spread. It would have been. Exactly. A similar situation instead. So the point is to reemphasize, because this is really important. We've had 300,000 years as Homo sapiens on Earth. So the likelihood that there could have been other nations on this planet is good. It is a very likely possibility. It's one that our scientists are afraid to examine and when those that's one who, aspect of safe science that's one aspect and when they when someone does dare in the um within the industry because it is an industry now when one does step out and dare to ask some questions he's deemed fringe and fringe has become synonymous with quack now, it's like uh, Professor Homelid, uh, who has years and years of research and, and papers, sound, proven work. He's the world's foremost expert on Rydberg matter. On Rydberg matter. And he's considered a quack among many of the established scientific community. Apparently overlooking all his years of expertise wondering where he got his degree from uh, that is absolutely unacceptable and we are not going to go interstellar with those kind of attitudes we're not going to go to interstellar if we maintain the status quo because that is an engine crankshaft out of balance one example it's doomed to fail hence the phrase cause and effect and what look around you cause and effect you know the other thing too is that the establishment has a very good subtle way of cleansing itself of any so-called fringe scientists 
If many young scientists go to college. They, when they're a child, they have these wonderful ideas. They dream about machines because their mind's uncluttered. Now, sure, maybe some of their ideas were not so sound. Maybe they needed some improvements. But the point is, when they get older and they go through years of education, they learn what is doable. Now, let me say that again. They learn what is you can do and what you cannot do. They do not learn, hey, take what we know, throw it out the back door, and reinvent it. Look for an answer, a new answer, because we don't know everything. Yeah, this is, we, the technology, the, the knowledge we have has allowed us to go to the moon and do other things. Great, fantastic. We're not condemning what we already know. We're condemning, so to speak, not really condemning, but we have a bone to pick with, that we shouldn't step out and look for something new. How dare you do that? That's impossible. It breaks the laws of physics. Well, from a certain perspective. So if an ET flew here uh, with a jump drive tomorrow and said, hell, hey, look, FTL travel's possible, which, by the way, the evidence for FTL is all around us, if oh, you know gosh, what to look, it? if you know what you're I'm, looking at, and the here, I just want to say, yeah, I just want to say this real yeah, yeah. quick. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because this is the paper, and oh yeah, like we mentioned in the first podcast, the academic world can be a bit dog eat dog. Yes. Oh yeah, you were going to say something. Are you there? Well, I think his uh, mic just cut off, so. Sorry, I uh, a little okay. Some, some coffee. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you know what we say, uh, you guys. You cannot breathe coffee, and yet it we seems try. like every time we try. Okay. Are you, um, you okay? okay. So, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that it actually superluminal motion and therefore also actually superluminal travel isn't just simply possible it's absolutely a requirement to explain with predictive power the world around us that's all i'm gonna say on it but yeah. <clears throat> yes it's absolutely necessary if yes. you say that superluminal travel is impossible you're saying the universe is and that is a whole nother ball of wax yes. actually no it's not because if we say universe is impossible and yet we're still living in it, and then, well, that's kind of... That's quackery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the real quackery. And sure, you know, we know that there are some... some. And I do also want to say this, because this, this, yeah. this, this is part of safe science sometimes also. Yeah. To say that perhaps the whole universe cannot be understood by us, that one day we'll run into limits of, well, maybe we can't uh, understand this. The, law, the wall of, of knowledge <sighs> limitation. <laughs> that, that's not science. That, that's not science at all. No, it is not. That's, well, dogma. That's that's just saying that we can't go any further. That's giving up. We can't do anything with such notions, and so we may as well dismiss them because even if someone might make an argument that, well, maybe such arguments are true, it, we can't do anything with that notion. You know, Which means that... Because the thing is, science yeah. does not exist in a void. And this is in that paper, our paper, by the way. Right. This, this is going in there. It um, certainly is, yes. Science does not exist in a void. Whatever our philosophical leanings are, we might have, in the end, science, scientific theories are judged by their simplicity and usefulness. And ultimately... Yeah, regardless of what any any one of us want, scientific theories will be used only if they're simple and useful. And if they're not simple, if they're not useful, then it doesn't matter how true they seem to be, no one will use them. Because we have to accept in the end, these are scientific theories to 
understand how the universe works. Now, obviously, after a while, when we finally have collected enough evidence, we can safely conclude this is no mere theory anymore. This must be how it actually works. Like relativity. Yes, relativity. Despite how... The more tests they do, the more unlikely it becomes... It's that... The, pro the possibility that some breakthrough will happen that shows it completely wrong is so near zero that we can safely say that it's not just a theory. It's diminished. Same thing. Yes. When, when people say atomic theory, we shouldn't say that anymore. Because it's not a theory. Or would you like to sit on top of a nuclear bomb when someone presses the button and say, it's just a theory. Just a theory. <laughs> As your pieces fly out into the stratosphere and to no orbit. it's not it's it's <laughs> fact we know it's that fact. atoms exist we that's know right. that they crack apart in certain predictable ways that's right that's a fact it's truth now i wanted to make mention to the fact that some people say well until your paper is peer-reviewed well what if our paper oh, the peer review is so gosh damn broken oh it's broken and there's a let, one there's second not only there's so many hold on there's the, not only a lot <laughs> A it's, lot of we're so passionate. False, that not, not, there's not just a lot of false negatives. Right. There's a lot of false positives leaking through. Yeah. Of, and but I'm not sure which is more concerning: the false pos the po false positives that are wrong but treated as correct, or the false negatives. That's almost more worrisome because yeah. false positives. Okay, individual scientists can and should filter them themselves when they read them use their own judgment individually yeah that's but, right because there's a saying and it holds some truth science isn't a democracy because the truth isn't a democratic decision the truth <laughs> is the truth wait a and minute the sun's shining one, hold on if it takes <laughs> one individual yeah. it doesn't matter if it takes one individual or a whole collective consensus to work at what the truth is right once the truth is known the truth well, the truth is the truth right. and once we learn that we if that's initially worked out by one individual then that's what happens that's right and so the peer review system is a, broken and i'm not sure how what can be done to replace it but probably the only answer is that part of their education before they get taught any equations or anything they need to be taught how to think they need right. to be taught how to think scientifically and how to assess things and how to apply that to every single aspect of their life because if then if there's anything in their life any part that they don't apply the scientific method to and logical reasoning to then it can creep into their science you can't say that I only apply science to science. No, everything is science. Yes, everything, even of uh, of uh, social science. And but, you, if you don't apply it to everything, you're asking for biases to leak in. Truth is not based on majority rule. The majority rule could uh, look out on a sunny day and say it's nighttime. Because that doesn't the, mean it's actually true. It doesn't mean that it's true. That's right. And for some and so, reason, that's where things are heading. And have been probably started somewhere around 30 to 40 years ago. And you wonder why science is unpopular. Because the status quo is making a mess of it. It's become so, oh, yeah. it's become an establishment. Calling it even a scientific establishment is an insult to science. It's not a scientific anymore. No. It's an establishment that calls itself science that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Now that might seem a little harsh, but Well it's either not something, either something big has to change or we're all doomed. It's as simple as that. You know, I, I mean, for, for those of you who've watched the oxygen video, collapse video. It's not, uh, we're not we trying to be if we're not, negative. If we don't accept, wake up and accept this, right? we don't have a good future. In fact, we may not have any future. Now, so again, which, if you're watching this, get over there and watch that oxygen collapse video. It's important. <laughs> exactly. Recently, I spoke to two young men who went to college, had ideas. They went the whole four years. Had ideas. The professor helped them through it. 
and then their ideas they to their horror was published with the professor's name they did not get any credit for it that yeah. is so rampant today even within some of the most prestigious of universities yes it's become you name established. it horror films it's it's like a horror horror movie it's become so prevalent that it's considered that just simply what you do and it's considered acceptable where professor has a team of scientists yeah of student scientists that help or or recent graduates that help them out and their names either don't go on it or only go on last so and everyone reads the first name off and that's who gets credit what's horrifying is that and it, and sometimes it's it's one thing if this if the professor is the expert in their field and they're trying to work out the concepts of it and they need yeah. to aid in te doing more of the technical part that's one thing that's one that's thing like understandable right but it's when the professors go and then do next to nothing except originate the initial idea and the details are all entirely worked out by their students what are the students slaves for them or something i mean it's almost like some look at it and what, that's what's not acceptable what's what's worse here is that these professors and and people that do things like this they do not believe they've just set the crankshaft out of balance because i guarantee you cause and effect will bring about a cause all right not the one that they're going to like uh, yeah, that actually, you know what? But there's I don't want to. There's, there's a lot of yeah. quacks that go and complain about the scientific establishment because their ideas were rejected. I just wanted to make it clear that we're not doing that. And if not our ideas all. get rejected, we don't hold it against anyone. And if our ideas were to for, for despite our. What our current, despite the fact that we don't think this is likely, if our ideas panned out to not. did not pan out. And turned out to be not the truth. Then that's that. We wouldn't we're not, stop. We're not. We're not whining because oh well, we're we're being rejected by scientific community. No, we're there's not a lot being of quacks doing that. That's no, right. we're 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 calling out those who are making a mess of things and helping to further exasperate the bad problem we have here on the planet. We are making efforts to do things to benefit humanity and we have not been rejected by anyone we haven't even posted anything in that regard well we have and we didn't get rejected we have the planet seeker well, paper up but also when we do talk about things and we especially when we bring out our theory we can back it up with with truth and evidence we can point to things we can describe things it has predictive power predictive which power makes it better than something they call string theory science even yeah. though it was developed back in the 70s and hasn't made a single prediction since or any ever and yet they call that still have the audacity to call that science and a theory it doesn't do anything you might as well write a bunch of different equations that go and reproduce i don't know Newton's equations, but write in a more complicated form, giving the same results. You haven't done anything so, except come up with a different way to write the same thing down. In fact, a more complex way. That's not science. That's mathematical playing around. The uh, the that's a mathematical game. The gentleman that I first mentioned, that claims that he's a scientist and engineer. I forgot something he also stated. He says that the power necessary to go interstellar is greater than that of what we currently produce here on Earth. And he concluded, therefore, that was out of our realm of capability. Now, here's the bone I've got to pick with that. He says, well, in 100 years. All right, guess what? May, maybe a hundred years we'll be able to do that okay guess what if we don't start now then we're not going to reach it in a hundred years 
And because the start now means that we have to kind of pretend, at least, that it is possible now, so we have the motivation to do it. And you know what? It's it called an open mind. Take, it probably won't take 100 years. No. So, I mean, who predicted atomic power before that was developed? That yeah. was the sudden leap forward. So to have the arrogance to say that we can't do it right now, therefore we won't be able to do it for an extremely long time, is just that arrogance. It's not. That is exas. That's that's almost as bad as the people who are denying that the climate is currently being destroyed. Oh, we're gonna get some comments for that one. Oh, I well, hope so. We we can tell you this. If you don't think so, then please go out and. Talk with the scientists with an open mind. Listen to what they have to say. Um, yes, we have conflicting signs. We have, on one hand, we see cooling, and on the other hand, we see warming. But there are Actually, some... as I talked about on the yes. um, oxygen collapse video, yeah. increased CO2 doesn't just cause a simple warming. It causes a climate erraticness, which means that you get That's both... worse. You get an overall heating, so the average temperature goes up, but then it causes also localized cooling. And if the thermal howline stops that because of the warming, it then causes a freezing. So it's not as simple as everyone first thought. That doesn't make it any less legitimate. It's what we it's do still. It, the yes, it's, so it's still happening. And that's why a better name isn't just climate change. Yeah, look, it's climate destruction. It's it's the too, climate is being completely uh, destroyed now, and we need to halt it. It's too and we easy. Can't do that if we keep yes. if we keep being the safe science, we're not going to fix it that way. Okay, oh, hold on one second. It's too easy for us to just say, "Oh, that's fear mongering," because what happens is those people are immediately struck with fear. That's not the proper response to if we're if we're deers deer in a headlights, we're doomed. Do you want to be doomed? But we're not saying that we're for sure going to be doomed. What we're saying here is we see the signs. We see some extremely concerning signs. And, and we need to take action to change it. And I think if you look around what's happening in your, perhaps your neighborhood or your large city nearby, I think you can see that there's some change afoot, and it's called the crank, broken crankshaft leaving the block. Now, so if we don't have a revolution in consciousness if we don't have a revolution in philosophy if we don't unite and start taking care of thy neighbor or whomever then okay. for sh well your neighbor well everyone will understand that if you don't turn and look at your neighbor as it's a fellow human being I don't care how many people are on this planet. I don't care if you have to compete with 13,000 applicants for the job you're applying for. If you don't, then you're adding to the broken crankshaft of that engine. And then, yeah, Earth is doomed for sure. And if that's where you want it to go, then fine. But I'm not willing to accept that. We're not, and so too are actually literally billions of people. We want to benefit humanity. We want to see humanity thrive and strive. We're going to have a Star Trek original version mainly, Star Trek-like future. We're not going to have the silly expanse or or um, Star, Wars. Star Wars future, because if we will, I guarantee you, it will be very, we won't have a future. It'll be very short-lived. A planet is very easy to separate. It's a ball of rocks loosely put together. Over a giant pressure cooker, it's, it's extremely fragile. All, all we got to do is have one scientist figure out how to detonate the, our star and don't say that it's not possible. 
And if that happens, that'll end your odds with your neighbor very quickly, won't it? So we need to work together. We need to recognize one another as humanity. And for the rest, well, cause and effect, yeah? Now, but this safe science is most critical because the science is the thing that's going to save your bottom. If you don't think so, try going out into the countryside and living without fire, without cooking, without warmth. Clothing is a technology. Even the cave you go into is a form of tech, becomes a form of technology. Shelter, it's called. Fire for cooking. That you're using that as a technology. All these things are for your survival. That's a technology. We are getting to a point where we're advanced. You know, it's going to be very easy. Eventually, we, if this carries on, we're going to see wars in space. And whatever misses, if one ship is shooting at one ship, if that misses and it's heading toward the planet, that could be your entire city especially if it's a projectile, like a railgun projectile. That's equivalent to a meteorite impact. Or worse. Or worse. In fact, uh, it's already been calculated that that impact has the energy of a hydrogen bomb. And just to the illustrate... Point, the point is, is that... Go ahead. This is serious, and this safe science won't end very well. And this all has to change, and it has to change quickly, or we don't have a future. It's right. not being negative. It's, in fact, no. if you don't want this to be negative, then... Look, it is a positive, because it we is. need to change something. That's right. We, the we, positive is that there's many wonderful technologies being developed right now and in the works. Right. And if only science wasn't being so safe, a lot of these could happen and happen much more quickly. Yes. Which means that in, in 10 years' time, we could be completely... In 10 years' time, we could have a world where we're no longer dependent on fossil fuels. We're no longer dependent on oil reserves for plastic we can make the plastic synthetically we're no longer it uh, we're no longer destroying the climate actively we're starting to patch it up that could all start in 10 years and then the, and then over the next over the coming century we could slowly begin to repair our planet so that by the time the year 2200 rolls around and the um not sorry not 2200 2100 and rolls around, and the 22nd century begins, it will be a bright new century where we actually grew up a bit more as a species and patched it together. What's wrong That's the bright with... future waiting ahead of us, but we have, right. to, we have to abandon the safe science, and we have to be willing to question absolutely everything. If What's... you're not willing to question something, yeah. that means that you're allowing a bias to creep in. What's wrong with complementing nature? What's wrong with complementing nature? What's wrong with working with nature? What's wrong with, with being harmonious with nature? Why do we have to do things the hard way? And why can't oh, we, we don't, take... That, that doesn't mean... One, one second. And, why, don't, uh, why can't we take and, and make safe the things that come out of a factory as an example that that yeah, are toxins so we don't have, why we don't why have do they to have to be carcinogenic why can't Excuse we develop yeah <laughs> i found my soapbox <laughs> go ahead we don't have to go and live like hunter gatherer in harmony with the environment we don't no. need that correct but we do need to clean our act up a bit and grow up or we're all or we're going to destroy the planet and ourselves we're at a turning point and if we right go to now. another planet we'll repeat the same things there yeah no it doesn't mean we have to wait till we fix everything first before leaving the planet but as we're leaving the planet as we colonize on star we need to be simultaneously trying to do better and who knows maybe that might mean that a colony gets established by people owned by 
by people who want to do make do better and it acts as a role model to the planet who knows but we have to we have to do this or we're going to mess things up so yeah cl how a factory could be self-contained new energy sources can be developed to I already mentioned the oxygen collapse video about deep geothermal. It's dry, it's safe, it doesn't cause earthquakes, it doesn't pollute. It could just be entirely enclosed. You'd have what looks like a Star Trek-style smooth dome building that just can churn out finished products. And it does not and waste to go in. There's, there's a new yeah. plasma furnace that's been developed that could literally use plasma jets. They're not just fiction. This is actually in development by several companies as we speak. Or building these things, not just planning to, they're actively, they've already built test models and are in the process of building full scale devices. Which means that the, there, are, this year. there are companies, there are people. They can people vaporize out. waste yeah. and turn it into just raw materials that can be. Well, here's another NASA developed that new fusion by firing a part of an electron beam at deteriorated compounds and it fused. Right. If act and Holman's work produces muons via an annihilation like reaction. Yes, annihilation like. Right. The act Holman's work actually has a, it's a different what completely new way to make antimatter. Point is is that if we actually put our full efforts behind it, we could have fusion power or something like fusion power in a couple of years. And we already could do dry geothermal anytime. In fact, there's uh, like in a company in India that's going and developing graphene cables to put down dr drill shafts. And we can easily drill deep enough. We already drill deep enough uh, for oil. There's a 12 kilometer deep um, oil line going down under Saudi Arabia. There's a cola super deep borehole about the same depth in Russia. I, there's I think... another one. I forget <clears throat> where it is, but point is is that we have options if we just put some effort behind it i just wanted to say something and that, that we already needed. starts to move us toward a star trek future we we need i need to clarify something and that is we're talking about deep deep geothermal not not wet we're talking about a solid core dry i already said that i said yes. dry deep geothermal. Dry geothermal which means no earthquakes it doesn't mean it it's unlike what we have today. There are geothermal today that uh, many people say are causing earthquakes. What we're talking about is incapable of that. So it's just dry. to make that it, that it, because it's dry. Now, some, something that I wanted to make mention to is that. And given the thermal conductivity of graphene, yeah. you could have the shaft <clears> at the top. If you have several going down and then they collect it together the heat pump, you have it at the top as hot as a nuclear reactor. It's just sitting there with <laughs> yeah. a pipe into the ground. Free and energy. It's already as good as uh, free. Financially it's already, free. <laughs> it's already as good as a nuclear power plant. Except right. it doesn't need any fuel. It doesn't need weight. It doesn't produce waste. Right. It's already cheaper to run. Yep. So the initial cost I mean, is a bit... Absolutely. Actually, it's probably cheaper to build than a nuclear power plant because all you have to do is drill. You don't have to build an expensive facility that has to handle radioactive materials. Oh, and how many, just, how many people have to work at one of these uh, power plants? A um, nuclear power plant requires anywhere from 500 to 1,500 people. It's that many people needed to keep the dangerous thing safe. Operating, yeah. Safe. That's the problem is that... There, the problem with nuclear power is that it's not only is it, it well for one, if you make one that's clean, you have a risk of nuclear proliferation. Well, I don't, and I don't think we you, should go off on to talking but, about. Okay, real quick. Mm -hmm. Problem is, is that it's just simply too unpredictable. The reactions are too hard to predict. A chemical reaction, on the other hand, we know precisely what it'll do. And fusion is better if its neutrons are eliminated. It's, and geothermal is yeah. better because it's all predictable. Better than fusion insofar as safety margins, yes. Absolutely. Um, but fusion is definitely better still than fission. And fusion can be made portable 
and put into vehicles. It can be in neighborhoods. And but we don't want to. We're not going to get off onto the concerns and the risks of even fusion. But one of the things that I wanted to make mention and is that, and I mentioned this in one of our videos before. Recently, Elon did as well, and he says fifty years ago, we had the technology to put boots on the moon, and we did. And I followed that up with we. We could make space stations, which we did, the International Space Station and the Challenger, well, I mean the space shuttles, and so on and so forth. But today, and Elon really knows what he's talking about, only he has the ability to reach the moon now and put boots on the moon, and he still has to do some development. We do not have the ability to put man on the moon today without redeveloping. And if that doesn't spell stagnation, then what does? I don't know what does, yeah. Exactly. Now, something else I wanted to touch on. Some people say, oh, we've got to get it right here on Earth before we go into space. Well, let me tell you. We've had 300,000 years to get it right as a homo sapien species. But guess what? Today we are more advanced. There's more people on the planet Earth, and we are more advanced than we have ever been as far as we know, and we're still here. Believe it or not, we're still here. Now, there's one particular reason for this, and maybe no, maybe uh, other civilizations didn't reach our level for one reason or another. We don't know. Those were speculations, of course. But technology serves to advance our consciousness, our awareness, and in turn, our understanding of the natural world, which also means of each other. Look at the scientific terms we throw around today as just commonplace. It's helped us in, in psychological corners to understand the world, which includes each other. Technology advances us, and technology will help to br put us, bring us past. We'll, we'll become a... Um, um, uh, what is it? The stage, uh, energy stage. Oh, I forgot. Uh, Renee, help me with this. Oh, type one. Ty yes, thank you. Type one energy type civilization. Type one. Right. Because there's some concern that when we reach a certain point of advancement, we will throw advanced weapons at each other and doom the planet and us with it. Well, those are valid concerns. And this is why we must change our philosophy and look at each other as fellow human beings now. And if we don't, then, yeah, we will have a very short-lived expanse scenario. And if someone survives, then and with advanced technology, the rest of the planet is enslaved. Those are the scenarios that play out, if not entirely ni annihilated. So, again, all the reasons for why we need to take the stagnation serious. We, and what we're talking about uh, is a positive thing. If you look at it a negative thing, if you look at being aware uh, of something as a negative, then you're adding to the problem. You're not part of the solution. If, if every day I were to jump into my car and back out of my driveway without even looking what's in the street, and I do that years on end, I guarantee you sooner or later I'm going to hit something. So if someone says, well, hey, you, you shouldn't do that. You're going to hit something and, and might even worse, you might kill somebody. Well, if I say, you're just being negative, then I'm dooming myself to cause and effect. We're just simply saying, look at the evidence, look at what's happening. We need to open our eyes and become aware of what's taking place so that we can avoid 
the negative that you're talking about, that you're saying that we're saying, it's very easy from a chair, an armchair, to say, ah, BS. And we hear it from a few people. Now, do you have anything uh, more to say, uh, Renee? Um, not really. I yeah. actually uh, would like to get on to other things. Okay. To write. All right. So just with regards to the podcast, I want to make, make sure everyone understands, and I'll probably have to put this in every one of them. Um, and that is these podcasts are not meant to be comprehensive or exhaustive discussions about a certain or specific technology, but instead they're only meant to be unscripted, un prepared chats and each fill, each podcast uh, will serve as a filler between our regular videos they're not going to replace them by no means um, not now. right and when our new facility is uh, built then we'll have a recording studio in there and other things will be worked out but we're passionate and no, we cannot see each other. We can't see we're in different uh, locations here. Uh, so when, when one wants to speak and the uh, we're both passionate, we complement one each other. And so it's not a matter of one's not allowing the other. There's no injustices here. And even if there was, if I resented that or if, or if he resented that, then... I mean, anyone resented that. I can tell you this. We are putting up, we're creating a barrier, a psychological barrier, a filter, which is eventually, resentment means to remember the original hurt. So if we throw up a resentment to, to one another, then cause and effect will eventually take place because it's out of balance. So instead like the two children I saw on the sandbox the other day. One had a shovel, one had a bucket. Well, the one with the shovel says, I want your bucket. He reached over to the, the other three- or four-year-old, grabbed the bucket out of his hand. He, that child, that um, uh, toddler started crying. He then grabbed the bucket out of the other kid's hand, hit him, hit him over the head with it. Now they're both crying. Well, within... I, it was like magic. Within three minutes, they were both playing together and sharing the bucket and the shovel. They no longer remembered the original hurt. They did not resent one another because they're too young. They were incapable. We learn to resent one another. So with that, I think we should sign off. And hey, yeah. if you've listened this far, Awesome. Thank you. Let's work together and let's not call each other names and go, oh, you're just being negative. That's so easy to do. Let's think things through. And eventually, without, and not, not it'll be well within 100 years, we're going to go interstellar. In fact, it'll be probably within 50 years. And yeah. we say this, we already understand what's needed. And it's that goes a long way towards understanding what we need to engineer. No, if you go talk, if you go to a forum on the internet and talk to so-called expert in, in physics or science, and he says, oh, no, they kid, those guys don't know what they're talking about. Well, that's because they don't know. If, you, if you're not aware of something that's in front of your face, like tachyons, then it's impossible. But instead, it's actually a, almost a crime to society, to civilization, to say that that's impossible. What they should be saying is, well, I'm not aware that is the correct thing to say. I'm not aware of the evidence. He did not say because he's a, not aware that it doesn't exist. He should make that very. He or she, because there's a lot of brilliant female scientists out there. Let me tell you, 
that run circles around uh, other fellow scientists. But I can, if they properly say that, then they're sticking to the scientific method. I think at that we need to uh, wrap it up now. We do indeed. So I, again, I thank you. I'm going to wrap it up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I am too. Uh, I, I am as well. So everyone, thank you. And together, and I mean together because we're including you guys, whether you think you have the abilities or te uh, the uh, the skill sets to to do something, hell no. Watching watching We're, this sharing with others that's already helping you're already helping and who knows you know we are looking for ways to make people fit we're not looking for ways of rejecting you and and i just told that to a new volu a, a new onboard member here which he has the eyes for wanting to become a, a starship crew member bless his heart i can tell you right now that that is what he's going to achieve okay so on that note keep wondering about space thank you